everyone and welcome. My name is Jeff and today we're going to have some fun playing Magic and we are playing some Ooze Counters. Uh, ooze really isn't like the main thing in this deck, uh, although there will be an Ooze Tribal deck coming soon that will have a lot more focus on that in the future. Uh, but I really like uh, or Orin Reef Ooze, which is one of the number, like the biggest addition that is a cool effect from this from the new set here uh, into the Conclave Mentor Counters Tribal deck type of thing that we're doing. Uh, lost a ton of pieces. We lost Pelt Collector. Lost like there's, there's just a bunch of pieces that lost and gained quite a few interesting pieces. Luminarch uh, Aspirant, uh, Swarm Shambler, which is a good one drop, and then Vastwood Fortification, which is a land that just puts counters on onto creatures. Uh, not sure if that that is great, especially when we need to be a little bit more of an aggressive uh, deck when we need our one two drops and three drops to really land. Uh, but it lets us play two spells like that we would normally take out of our land base anyway, kind of. Uh, and so I, I I think it's really good. So those are the main additions to the deck, as well as our Skyclave Apparition, allowing us to have another body we can put on the battlefield that will also remove other things from their side of the board. So why is this deck? I think powerful enough to actually be pretty good in standard right now, uh, especially with Urogon and, you know, Omnath still being annoyance and everything like that, uh, especially big life gain -y type of things are going to be annoying. I, I think it's really powerful because we have so many cool, interesting ways to do combat tricks in the format right now with plus one plus one counters, especially. So Conclave Mentor being able to put additional plus one plus one counters whenever they land to the battlefield is sweet. By the way, the Ooze Tribal deck is going to be Biojank Ooze and everything in Historic, which will be so sweet. I'm really excited for that one. <laughs> but um, right now we have to, we have, we're playing Standard because Standard is new and fresh. And I know a lot of people are kind of fresh with it. And so it is my job, it is my duty to bring to you guys something interesting and fun. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. So the cool thing about this is that we have a ton of ways to put counters onto creatures that don't necessarily put counters onto themselves. Luminarch Aspirant just puts a counter onto any creature you control. Uh, Orn Reef Ooze, when it enters the battlefield, puts creatures a counter onto any creature you control. Um, you know, even Hydra's Growth can put a counter onto any creature you control. And so all of a sudden, we can have some other creatures that don't have counter synergies into this deck to be able to put counters onto themselves and do cool things. Naturally, we have Scavenging Ooze for life gain, just growing it. It's a good card regardless of what happens. With Conclave Mentor, it becomes a really powerful threat. Uh, we have Swarm Shambler because we're going to have lots of creatures with plus and plus encounters onto it. So we can create, we can go wide with the, the insects and then all of a sudden, bam, uh, you know, Conclave Mentor, Rather Solidarity, we have a, a board full of three threes or something like that. The deck can be pretty busted, as well as just our Wildwood Scourge, which is one of the cards that's super sweet that came from M21. Whenever it enters battlefield with X counters, whenever one or one or more plus and plus encounters are put onto an, another non-Hydra creature you control, put a plus and plus encounter onto Wildwood Scourge, which is the rest of the deck. We get to do some pretty sweet stuff with it. And that is where things like Fairy Guide Mother come into the deck that just can give a creature plus two plus one and it gains flying until it turn. One of the biggest issues with Wildwood Scourge is that it doesn't have evasiveness. It doesn't have trample. It doesn't have anything good. You know, it's just like, it's a big body. It can be a 16-16 really quick. Yay, that's great, If but it's just going to get chump blocked by the illusion or something like that that we, we give them. Uh, and that's where two copies of Fairy Guide Mother are, are into the deck to try to fix it a little bit. We are going wide with Ornery Foos. We are going wide with, you know, our Bosri Cat as well, which again can put counters onto any creature, give them an Instructor go swinging in we can instant speed put some counters onto stuff i actually had light of uh, um, light of hope a little bit in the deck as, as well um not a lot of enchantments we need to destroy at the moment and so it wasn't as big of a deal uh so that's basically the deck here and then we have buys usually tenant up on the top end to be just a, a great answer for board wipes board wipes is the biggest threat that we have in this in this here yeah we'll probably give them something with skyclave apparition if they go for board wipe uh but we also get to then create a board full of two two knights if we do have Bosri's lieutenant out and so i'm really excited to try out this deck i haven't actually tested it just yet we're i'm going to be playing this uh with you guys as we're going through and uh i i think that this is the right way to play it the biggest issue is not as many removal spells as you guys know i tend to play and so the three copies of skyclave operation I'm, I'm hoping that we run into the right times i hope that we can just go aggressive enough with this we're, we lost pell collector we lost a few other one drops that are really good i'm hoping fairy gun mother and swarm chandler can kind of cover that slot uh well whisker doesn't really count in that slot it's it's a two drop or three drop so let's go ahead and try it out let's see how this does and uh yeah we're gonna jump into the gameplay and wish me luck all right, some slow lands here, but we'd get an Aspirin out in turn two. We don't have uh, huge payoffs other than Hydra's Growth being pretty sweet. So we're going to go ahead and try and keep this. 
see how it does for us. I mean, an aspirant with uh, <laughs> with Hydra's growth sounds really fun. Yeah, we'll keep land. Land is grand. Uh, Orn Reef Ooze also at the Shambler could be pretty sweet. We can play out like both Shamblers this turn, get out Orn Reef Ooze on the turn after, and then start swinging in, put counters onto everything. Uh, depending on what they play here, if they're going more like Mono Green Stompy, Lotus Cobra. All right, so man, wish I had my Confounding Conundrum again. Um, maybe we put this on white so that we can get out the Skyclave Apparition on the next turn. Go on Aspirant. Put a counter on past the turn. Gilded Goosey. Getting rid of a Lotus Cobra is typically very important. No blocks. Take it. Any ramp? No ramp. Interesting. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and swing in. Down to 17 Apparition. Take the Cobra and opponent scoops it up. Whew, all right, yeah, that's that's pretty sweet. Dude, Apparition is awesome when it goes off at the right times. I I dig it, I dig it lots. And we only have two tapped lands with these Temple of Plenties and some Feeble Passages, but it's always annoying drawing into them turn, uh, turn one. We could draw an untapped land. Uh, with two draws and try to get the Conclave Mentor, but I guess in a way it's better to get this out before the Swarm Shambler. All of a sudden it becomes a one mana 2 2, which is just nice. Alright, go Shambler. Pass the turn. Edgewall Innkeeper. Teamer Adventures. Brazen Borrower with Lucky Clover shuts us down hard. Hard, I say. Okay, Conclave Mentor. Pass the turn. How greedy do we get here? If we find an untapped land, I think I go Wildwood Scourge, hold up the Shambler to be able to have a really good block. If they have Brazen Barber though, we're so screwed. <laughs> All right, goes Stompy. Rude. Gain some life. No blocks. All right, let's go ahead and get a scry. What are we looking for here? Another Orin Reef Ooze. Uh, I think that goes to the bottom. Conclave Mentor number two. Pass the turn. No more removal. Don't do it. Lucky Clover. Double Bone Crusher. Ah! For the rudeness. All right. Oh, you jerk. All right, green source. Uh, let's go Skyclave Apparition. Just kill the Edgewall Innkeeper. No more card draw for you. Pass the turn. Bone Crusher number three. Doesn't really help to kill the Apparition, though. They'd probably save it for something else. Escape to the wilds. No lucky clovers. No brazen borrowers. Oh, there's lucky clover. All right, can we actually close this game out? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Keeps it on top. Oh no, brazen borrower most likely. Um, let's see here. How do we want to play this? Okay, Swarm Shambler. That actually gives us a little bit of protection from the... Um, let's see here. Let's, let's go ahead and put on the Ornery Foos. Swing in. That does give us a little bit of protection from the Brazen Borrower. If they bounce a bunch of things with counters onto them, uh, then we get a bunch of insects. And so they do target a lot of stuff. So these Swarm Shamblers will actually just give us a really wide board. So having two of them really helps there, actually. Beanstalk Giant, yeah, lots and lots of ramp. This is where Confounded Conundrum seems sweet. OK, 
Okay, Edgewell Inkiver comes out. That's cool, that's cool. And a big old Love Struck Beast. Bazri's Lieutenant. Protection from Multicolored. Um, yeah, I go ahead and put it here. No attacks, pass the turn. We're pretty close to actually start going pretty aggressive here. If we find like a Bazri Solidarity or a Conclave Mentor, man, Love Struck Beasts are just annoying. All right. Yeah, kill Apparition, you get one more blocker. We could get rid of the Lucky Clover here, too. They probably just play these out to start drawing cards. I mean, we, we are going to have to deal with the Beanstalk Giant. We can build a bigger board and, than they can, though. It all comes down to the Lucky Clovers and kind of... Actually, it comes down to them finding Fae of Wishes and getting the Exile, probably. All right, Scourge. Um, X1. Pass the turn. Escape to the wilds. Digging through the entire deck. There's the Fae of Wishes. And a Great Henge. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this definitely isn't looking up for us right now. Scorching Dragonfire. So the right play here is to go for uh, Great Henge into Fae of Wishes. And the Scorching Dragonfire probably. Have Ugin on the next turn. Plays it out before the Great Henge. I, I don't think that's the right way to go. Storm's Wrath. Uh, yeah, that's actually kind of okay with us. A Storm's Wrath here would be great for us. And then sleep. Ooh. Ooh, interesting. That, I did not recognize that was in the format with the, the arena ability. I think those are only available in best of one, by the way. Um, I like them. I'm a fan of the, the set. If you want to look these up, by the way, go set colon A, uh, A and B. Alpha Nancy Bravo. And it shows which ones are available from the newest starter decks. Pretty cool stuff. This does kind of answer the Bajri's Lieutenant, which is annoying. All right, get two one ones. Bajri's Solidarity. All right, so we get some things that get out of the Storm's Wrath way. Um, see here um we get to go to the vastwood scourge really big we also force them to kind of chump block a little bit here we did create some knights now which will be a little bit worse but i'm actually i'm i'm still okay with this chumps trades I was mostly trying to get Orin Reef out of out of range anyway. Um, and this is fine. The main thing was to try to get one Lovestruck Beast off the board. We lose out on not having as many knights after this Storm's Wrath, but we also, I mean, we get to keep a lot of our stuff alive anyway. The Storm's Wrath now isn't that useful for them. The sleep is, but now they don't have the Love Struck Beasts anymore to actually go ham. So now their best play is probably Beanstalk Giant into Great Henge to try to get that out. Uh, which I don't know how we beat that with sleep. That actually is pretty good. 
It's probably by swinging in more aggressively. Alright, everything gets tapped down. They get a hidden for eight. We can play out a scavenging ooze, um, which will die to the storm's wrath unless we hit a green source here. Oh, okay. Do they have enough to actually kill us? Dude, I have not seen sleep in the sideboard with this, and I, I like it. That's brilliant. Adventurous Impulse. Thanks for Fable Passage. Cool. Down to 16. That's a green source, but it's kind of the wrong the wrong way there. All right, scavenging ooze. Yeah, because Storm's Wrath means they kill all these guys, but they still get a hit in for enough for lethal. Um, and we can't quite get out of the Storm's Wrath lane, so... Yeah, good game. It's a tapped land. All right, I, I'm going to make him play it out here, but they have it. Basically, we have a chump block. I mean, any of these other three cards could also be, you know, bounce or kill spell or whatever they need. I, I'm actually going to go ahead and sack one of these now. Um, I just realized that if they do have a target, the Shambler can create some more tokens for us. Actually, you know what? Stormstrath is still okay because Bosri's Lieutenant. That's right. I forgot about Bosri's Lieutenant. Stormstrath is great here for us. It has to be bounced, which then we still create tokens. So there's Stormstrath. All right, so we just gain some life here. Grow the Squalwood Scourge. Lose a bunch of creatures. Create two more tokens. Do you have Bone Crusher? Or Brazen Borrower. We still have not seen a Brazen Borrower the entire game. Opponent says, oops, yep. I missed that too here. Plays Fate of Wishes, draws a card. Yeah, you get three, two more draws. There's a Brazen Borrower. All right. Yeah, there's the good game. We will we'll go ahead and skip there. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, that was a fun one. Uh, I definitely feel that classed in that matchup, though. Up against the Lunar un Unit. Lunar Unit. <laughs> uh, this is an awkward hand. I actually, this will work out pretty well. So keep this. Do we go ahead and bring out the Fairy Guide Mother or use it for later? I guess now we bring it out as a blocker. Ooh, Bowser Solidarity on top, too. That is four scavenging uses. Which, I mean, kind of is great against the Thieves. But at the same time, uh. All right, play out a blocker for the Thieves Guild Enforcer. Yeah, being able to exile our graveyard is kind of nice against this. Acquisitions expert. <laughs> what are you going to take? A scavenging ooze? Uh, yeah, so one card. Just Fable Passage. All right. Which, unfortunately, actually kind of hurts us a bit. But no attacks past the turn. I guess I should be swinging with Fairy Guide Mother, but we're at five already here. Nike Hawk Scavenger. Hmm. All right, that's pretty great. Bosri Cat. Oh, dang it. I was thinking that we could keep it alive long enough, but with uh, Baj, you're going to die here. We either have the chump block, which then we just kind of lose the value that we're going for. Dang rogues. Is this just mono black rogues? Okay, there's the blue. Drown in the lock. It's okay. We have a few more of those.
All right, so we kill this one. We end up losing both. Uh, we just have to find a way to get rid of this. All right, scavenging use. We're already at 11, so we're not gonna get them below the eight. Um, what are the types? Sorcery. Sorcery. So we don't have any instance. We have two lands though. Yeah, nothing that we can really do about it this turn. So let's just get out the Aspirant. Um, in case of Heartless Act. So you go ahead and go here. Pass the turn. Wind Robber. I just don't know how we beat the Scavenger. Yeah, Adrenaline Lock. That is a sweet hand. Good for you, sir. <laughs> Not a whole lot we can do about that. I mean, we had our four scavengers, which is like a card that kind of works here against them. And this still is just awful. Hmm. All right, swing in. I, I'll wait one or two more turns, but I, I really can't think. Because we have core spirit dancers to run into, if we find one, we have a really good chance of coming back. Holy crap, this guy's hand and draws have been amazing. Amazing. Uh, yeah, we're dead. Not in the next turn for sure, but Pretty getting close. Oh man, that was brutal. Up against Oman, Omanu, bring it on. All right, keep this. This is a sweet hand. And the land is nice. All right, go Swarm Shambler. That's the turn. I think we go for the Welded Scourge over anything else here all right passing just going to create some food kind of slow hand a lot of slow lands man I, we've run into these two temple of plenties way more often than i was hoping for i could have attacked in if i put the counter there but we get benefit of having them not being able to target any of our stuff kind of uh by putting counters spread I, I meant to go for the Scourge there. I even said I was going to go for the Scourge earlier. I don't know what I was doing. Oh well. If we had an untapped land, it's it's okay. <laughs> My mouth. Alright, play the planes. Play this X1. And pass the turn. All right, gets a pump. They could have into the Royal here as well. Um, we're just gonna jump block with the one on. Biggest issue with the Mammoth is that it's so easily jump locked. Goes for the ram through, doesn't have trample, so it just kills the shambler, but we get to grow the wild with scourge here, so that's that's fine. I'm not sure that's the right target. Although we do get to create insects every time they target stuff. So there's something, but the scourge definitely has the highest chance of just being a good blocker that you can't ram through anyway. Another Wildwood Scourge. Uh, this only works with non-Hydra creatures. Let's go Temple of Plenty. Scavenging Ooze is only really useful if we get to use something right away. All right, Conclave Mentor is pretty nice. Keep that on top. Scourge, X2. Get another Chump Blocker here. We get to swing with the Scourge. 
They could have another ram through in hand. Um, which would definitely be annoying. Down to 18. Great hinge. Ah, rude. Rude. Last card could be into the royal. Or a rolling regrowth, excuse me. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and jump. Okay, Temple of Plenty. Let's go ahead and scry. Another land. I mean, that helps with scavenging use, but we're fine here. All right, so I can go Badger's Lieutenant, put counters onto our guy. We get a swing in for three, for six here. Have a good blocker. We can take five just fine. Um, or do I want to wait for the Conclave Mentor? We can go Mentor, Ooze, do that on the next turn uh, and get a ton more counters. And then we can Scavenging Ooze on that turn as well. So it's it's a bit more risky, but there's a high payoff. A huge payoff. Last card is something. I mean, they could also just be using Gilded Goose here. Ooh, Ascription of Abundance. All right, gain two life. That's annoying for sure, but manageable. We're just going to take our beats next turn no matter what. Swing in. Down to 16, pass the turn. All right, we just have to hope that they have a couple of dead draws and not creatures like a flippin' questing beast. Oh, that's rough. Man, the whole uh, <laughs> protection from multicolored used to be so good, but I feel like all the threats now are kind of okay. I mean, this beats Omnath. There's that. Yay. <laughs> oh, okie dokie then. All right, to 12. Fairy Guide Mother's fun. All right, Bosri's Lieutenant. Counter here. Two counters. Man, if we had kept the Conclave Mentor, we would actually be able to come out of this just fine. As it is, we're going to be scrapping. Okay, pass the turn. All right, they get the landfall trigger. Three five fives. Seems okay. Swings with all of them. Two more creatures left. We get to put three more power on the board real quick. So I think what we do is we kill everything but the, uh, can we take 10 here? It's really risky. We can block like this, block like this. We we'll lose out, uh, yeah, I think that's probably the best way to block. Questing Beast is annoying for sure. If they have Ram through or anything like that, it's really bad, but we get to keep blockers for the next turn. So yeah, I think we go ahead and block like this. We'll probably lose Bowser's Lieutenant. At least two things are dying. We get to create some two twos. Those don't get to block Questing Beast, which means we're losing two things anyway, but we might get another chance with uh, Scavenging Ooze, like pumping these guys is the chance. So let's see if they prioritize the Scavenging Ooze or not. All right, so they kill the Scavenging Ooze, interesting. We go to eight. So no more life gain. Create some two twos. This has vigilance. Um, man, I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have offered up the trade with the scavenging news. No attacks past the turn. 
Dude, a 5-5 five, five questing beast is a very different thing from a 4-4 four, four questing beast. It's amazing how much harder it is to kill. How many more things you have to throw in front of it. Up 23. They're definitely ahead here. The Great Henge is really good. We probably ought to throw a couple into our deck as well. Uh, it's a really good card advantage in it, engine, and it puts counters onto stuff, and we grow while well, it scourges really quickly, so why not? I think we keep the Lieutenant around. Going wide gives us a good shot. Like, if we get a Bosri Solidarity here, or something like that, we can be in really good shape. Questing Beast number two. For the love. Go ahead and put the other counter on to Bowser's Attendant now. Uh, we could put it here and just create another 2-2 for us, uh, which could be somewhat useful. This lets us actually trade off with the Questing Beast, though. So we'll we'll try to create a board that can actually be swinging in. Uh, the goal is that they just don't hit anything for a couple of turns, and hopefully that works. <laughs> we'll see. Gaining three life every turn. Yeah. We, we did a big blow there, though. Was huge. Yeah, we will trade off. Did they draw another questing beast? Say it ain't so. All right, no more questing beasts. Luminarch Aspirant. Counters go onto the vigilant creatures for sure. It'd be nice to get onto the Fairy Guide Mother. But that really doesn't matter that much. If they're going to chump block, they want to chump block something bigger. Yeah, they can block one point of damage. If anything, this makes sure everything keeps going through and they're not doing the combat math. All right. Up to eight. Gets to sack two food tokens here. Up to 14. 16 with a great hinge. All right, so what did you draw? Did you find a creature? Are you going to string a bunch together? Is it great hinge number two? It, there definitely are dead draws here. There's one land. Good. Gain some life. This could be like a primal might going for a big hit. Oh, do they have lethal with a primal might? No. I mean, we were dead anyway with it. Primal Might is another draw that can totally happen. <laughs> no. No. Oh. I mean, they would have killed the Fairy Guide Mother anyway, so keeping back a blocker doesn't matter. Wow. Wow. Dude, I thought we were turning a corner there too. I was like, I, I think I played it right. But... Extra card draw. I, I do think that um, two copies of Great Hen should come into this deck as well. Not going to do it in this one, but it could definitely be good. Up against Obi Khan. Bring on Obi Khan. Um, we'll keep this. Hello there. Not able to play any of our three drops unless we crack the field passage now. Uh, so let's go ahead and and do that. It'd be really annoying to not to like hit a bunch of white sources after this, but I, I think I'd rather make sure I can hit this guy Clave Apparition. Alright, what you gonna hit here? Scavenging Ooze. Ooze. I can go for Fairy Guide Mother and then pump it when they attack. Trying to act like I don't have any triggers here, so I'm going to be trying to speed through these. All 
All right. Yeah, get to kill the robber of the rich. Nice. Takes the Bajri's lieutenant. Rude. All right, uh, green source off the top could be pretty nice. Actually, yeah, here we go. Sky Clay Apparition. Nice. Yeah, these are so good. <laughs> I mean, they can get a 3-3 out of this, which is cool. We cannot kill that, however. That's bad. Ooh, let's see here. All right, scavenging ooze. No attacks past the turn. Annex number two. We can double block the Torbrand, then get a 3 3. We can apparition the annex. I think just killing what we can while we can is better than trying to play this a little bit slower. Our life total needs to stay high to win this one. Oh, right. It doesn't actually kill both of them because it only does damage the two extra damage to the one it could hit. Uh, so that actually is really sweet there. All right. So let's go green source, uh, not Basri. Let's go apparition onto annex. Pass the turn. Another Torbrand. All right. That means they can swing with the 1-1 one, one now. Okay, down to 15. Back up to 16. You can go Guide Mother, Solidarity, counter onto another thing. Just to create a lot of blockers with a lot of power. All right, pass the turn. Land drop, okay. Oh, please don't have the Ember Cleave. Oh, if it's Ember Cleave, we're screwed. We could kill here. Kill the Hellhound for this. Kill Torbrand on another turn. We're going to take a big hit. That's fine. Embercleave. Ah, oh, they have it. All right, where does it go? Onto Torbrand. Onto the Hellhound. Okay. That must mean the last card is uh, a land, maybe? I mean, we still have a massive scavenging goose, which helps a little bit. Down to five. Just a little bit, though. Ooh, that's actually nice. Um, yeah, we need more blockers, so... Play the ooze. I, I'm not sure if we should have been playing the advisory cat here at all. It doesn't create more blockers, though, and that's the biggest issue. Um, pass the turn. If they hit a land drop, we can't survive. I don't think... Maybe. All right, so how do we have to block? Block here, one gets through unless I pump. Um, block here, four gets through, chump here, gain one life, let one through, we take five, we get to kill this, kill this, kill this, all that's left is the Torbrand with an Embercleave on board, if we hit, oh, we don't have any removal for it, that's still the best thing we can do, huh, so yeah, block this way. If they have another Ember Cleave, they just put it onto Torren, we're dead, right? All right. Yeah, good game. You had it all, sir. 
we actually had a pretty sweet hand. We were we were doing a lot to their deck. They had double annex, double Torbrand, uh, just everything there. They did hit a lot of lands, but we were able to play slow enough that it was okay. Up against Amor, and we will keep this. Play fast with Ticket Out Tapped. That kind of shows them what kind of deck we are, but that's fine. It's not like it's going to... They're going to figure it out in a turn or two anyway. I think we're leading out with the Scourge. All right, Temple of Enlightenment. Scourge went to the top. All right, so Jeskai. Gonna have, yeah, some triggers there. Uh, yeah, let's go Aspirant. Nothing in the graveyard yet to really exile away. Um, do we put this on white or green? More scavenging use triggers. Could be nice. We'll put on white for now. Pass the turn. We never want more than like two white sources really with this deck. Rude. All right, scavenging use, pass the turn. Now it would be nice to have it as a green source. Narset. Cannot be hit by the Skyclave Apparition, but it dodges Bosri's Lieutenant. Yeah, all right. Yeah, pretty sweet deck. Seagate, Restoration, all these lands count as spells, which is pretty sweet. Uh, but Bosri's Lieutenant is also really sweet here. Four or five, really hard for them to deal with. If they just play out the Bone Crusher, we get the Skyclave Apparition, kill the Narset, and then we just hope for no board wipe. They may fire off the board wipe right away anyway. We'll see. Plays out the Shark Typhoon. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, I think we need more removal in the deck. <laughs> All right, first off, let's go ahead and kill Narset. Um, we can somewhat race this. Scavenging Ooze. Do we go ahead and throw out the Bosri Solidarity? If it's a board wipe, no. We get to grow the board quite a bit, though, and start putting out more threats. Eh. We don't have a lot to play anyway. Plays and nothing. All right, Bone Crusher Giant comes out. All right, Fable Passage. Green Source. Skyclave Apparition. Essence Scatter. Rude. So they can double block and still kill the Lieutenant. Yeah, I think this one's probably over already anyway. There's just like, Wood Strike Typhoon is out. We, we just need more removal in the deck for things like that. Which I mean, that takes away all of what this deck's trying to do is be more aggressive and get out, get things out there. And I think that that's kind of what I'm recognizing is this deck just doesn't quite have the same aggressiveness that it had beforehand. Uh, it definitely has explosiveness, but not the aggressiveness. <laughs> Uh, and so overall, I like the deck. It's fun. This is definitely more of a let's try to make this work type of deck. Uh, ooze counters and ordinary foods when it was out was actually pretty fun. Um, we, we get to create big board states, do fun things like that. And that is a really fun thing in magic for me. There was a big post that was recently put out on Twitter about someone just like missing out on the whole just basic combat math, you know, type of feel of magic. And that's one of the, my favorite things about counters is that you get to play this kind of thing. But the thing that the Twitter post said was basically that's done for in magic right now. You, you don't get that kind of thing like this is a, a, a not good deck anymore. You know, not that this would have done well in a lot of formats, but like the kind of counter synergies we have right now are way better than they've been in the past. And it's still not quite worthwhile to be <laughs> up against some of the other decks that are out there. So 
it's fun. I think this is powerful uh, to an extent. Uh, it depends on what meta you're up against. And I definitely think you need to add in a few more removal spells of some sort. Uh, and I think that just having good draws that'll happen more often, like actually keeping your Cloudclaim Mentors alive as well every once in a while. Like, I don't think we ever kept one alive, which was kind of sad. And that's just going to happen sometimes. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much and bye-bye.